Hey everyone, Chris Sawyer here. The Varietal Show is back. Welcome here to an amazing cruise line. You heard me right, Celebrity Cruises. Here we are on the solstice. I am here with my great friend, Dr. David Pullard. And uh, Dr. David and I have a great relationship where I met Dr. David uh, when we were on the Apex, which is also Celebrity Cruises. And uh, we, we just hit it off, I don't know. It, it, he kind of likes wine, you guys. And so I took him out to dinner. We went to the greatest thing ever, Le Petit Chef. Once you get into Celebrity Cruises, you look that up like you're pretty much on the boat at that point. Uh, but we had an amazing dinner. If you guys saw one of the episodes, it was about uh, six months ago with Daniel East, an amazing entertainer. He was on that boat with us too. That was on the apex. We just happened to get lucky um, and be on this one together. I was doing this amazing um, wine classes, and let's see, wink. Yeah, Christopher Sawyer Wine Group private function, like usual, just a bunch of great things. Tasting some wines, and I run across Dr. Dave, and Dr. Dave is an amazing guy. We'll, we're going to find out in just a moment about why he's so great, but. He is uh, really a real doctor that delivers babies, but he has a very interesting passion and a very interesting way that he got involved in water. And talking about when we were in um, going down the Caribbean, we we're yes. talking about the coral reef. And now we're here and we we're talking about glaciers. And so I was at his class the other day, so I started to invite him to my wine classes, and here we are today. <laughs> Isn't this great, David? It is wonderful to be here with you yeah. once again, Chris. Thank you. Let me start it by asking you the question right off the bat so people kind of get this concept. How many babies have you delivered? Wow, it's been a 38-year blessed career, and the answer, I guess, uh, close to 5,000 babies. That is amazing. <laughs> and, you know, I know him for his water expertise. It's a very interesting story. Uh, let's let's do it while we're tasting some wine, of course, um, so we can be talking about liquid products and babies and glaciers and things like that. So um, this first wine that we're going to do here is the Shehalem Lamet Valley. This is, if you haven't ever had this before, this is the Enox. And it's probably one of the first Chardonnays that I ever tasted from the United States. And this is back in the late 90s. That is unoaked and that was way before unoaked started so uh, here we are we're tasting this we had this with a great um, course today uh, I had it with my soup what do you have it with yes I had another crab cake I oh, couldn't another resist crab. a celebrity crab cake so I yeah. broke a rule that's okay so here we are Dr. David um, tell us a little bit about your background obviously you went to school Pepperdine right uh, yes. Pepperdine great and, memory. and lives in San Diego area Tell us a little bit about how you went from being a, a doctor, um, you know, who delivers um, children, um, to becoming an expert in water. Ah, well, I guess, you know, we can all Cheers. start by admitting, realizing, and appreciating that we were all, every one of us, was born of water. In the amniotic sac, yes. for nine months, we breathed water once our diaphragm and lungs developed. So we were breathing water before we breathed air. And actually, I really didn't go from being a doctor to my love of the ocean and yep. her creatures and glaciers. I went from Pepperdine, as you mentioned, yep. um, undergraduate as a marine biology, natural science major, and then got into, was accepted into medical school, which was kind of plan B in what I thought was plan B, superseded my, my thoughts to go into marine biology because I got rejected by all the marine biology schools that I applied to for graduate degree and accepted by all the medical schools yeah. I applied to as plan B. So I thought life is slapping me upside yeah. the head yeah. saying have a sip of wine and uh, change life courses. Amazing. Um, I really enjoy, have enjoyed your classes. Um, you know, obviously we're talking about the coral reefs. Um, you got kind of into this too for a special reason. There was a oil spill, correct? Uh, this yes. is a good. This is a good one, you guys. Listen to how he kind of got into this, and like here he is today. Tell us a little bit about that. You told this story the other day when we were talking about glaciers. Right here, we're at. We're looking back. We're at British Columbia now. We're getting close to Victoria, but we were in Alaska, and so on the way up, 
I got to go to uh, Dr. Dave's class, and this was a different class. So you were very clear about what got you into this. It's a very interesting story. Why don't you tell everyone? Sure, and I'll, I'll keep it brief, I promise. Yeah. So to hopefully, for your sake, keep it interesting. But that is, uh, here I was, uh, my passion for the ocean, which was instilled, I, I, I think I developed as a child, and it just continued, it never extinguished, even with the four rigorous years of medical school and then residency in obstetrics, gynecology, women's health, though I did have to, shall we say, put it on a shelf, my love for the ocean. I, I didn't snorkel or scuba or anything for eight years, but I never lost the passion. As Soon as I completed residency, I know all the other buddies I graduated with, they bought nice cars, I got a small boat, and that's how uh, I got right back into the ocean. <clears throat> I was pretty busy as a doctor, but then 2010, unfortunately, April 2010, that deep water horizon oil spill, the explosion in the Gulf, Barataria Bay, many, many dolphins, bottlenose, beautiful Atlantic bottlenose dolphins, oil slicked. They needed to do some studies on them, but they never want to study a pregnant dolphin. So they called saying, can you help us? We need somebody to rule out pregnancy before we would ever take a dolphin out of the water into a sling yeah. to study her out of the water. Once we find out she's pregnant, we'll tag her and leave her in the Barataria Bay and never harass her. Can you help us? I go, sure, um, get her to pee in a cup. I'll be right there. And they, they said, no, we need someone to get in the water and do an obstetric ultrasound to check for pregnancy in these dolphins before we haul them out. And so here's a career in obstetrics that I could have never scripted for myself, and now I'm back to marine biology, so it was perfect. Okay, we got a little bit of noise back there. Oh yeah, there they go, there they go. Okay, this is real, you guys, this is real. Yeah, last day of the cruise, yeah. the crew is really busy. Yeah, Tuscany Grill, um, and they're they're taking off. So anywho, um, you just kind of blew me away with that um, the other day when I saw that, and I was really super into it. You just have gotten so passionate about this. You have great statistics. You have great, you know, um, things that happen. I mean, tell us a little bit about, you know, going into the glaciers here, about some of the things you were teaching us. <laughs> but before we do, let's have a little sip of this, huh? Certainly. So, um, once again, this is a Shehalem. Uh, this is the new vintage. This is 2021. My great friends at Stoller Winery um, up in Oregon, Stoller Vineyards. Um, they were nice enough to provide us with the Shehalem, which they also own that brand. Um, we, we did a great tasting. You were there for the Pinot one. I invited him to the proprietary one as well. You were with this, me for this great lunch today. This is a really good wine. I mean, I love this freshness. I love everything about it. But, you know, Oregon white wine, best known for Pinot Grigio, or Pinot Gris, sorry. Let's be real honest there. It's Pinot Gris. Uh, because of its relationship with Pinot Noir and the fact that it's made more in an Alsatian style than an Italian style, so Pinot Gris. But this is a Chardonnay that this winery really went after a long time ago. I give some big kudos to Harry Peterson Nedry, one of my great friends who started this winery a long time ago with Bill, um, full, with Bill Stoller as well. And um, just this is fantastic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It brings us right to those. Are you okay? Yes, I don't know why. Something maybe it's that amazing pistachio um, that I had a little while ago, but for some reason I'm just oh, hi everyone. Um, so let's um, before we go in there, let me just say we're going to taste this wine real quick okay. too. Um, actually, let's taste the one on the left, and this is the Muscardini. Um, so this is the Muscardini Tesoro. So this was one of the uh, wines that I offered tonight for or today for this amazing um, celebration of, of just us in general of being on this boat these uh, great people great consumers that were here for this um, you know a little tour with me and for you as my special guest to be here but this is a blend of we've got 52% um, Sangiovese 26% Cabernet Sauvignon and 22% Syrah. This was a home run today. Mm. Uh, you really like this one too. Yeah. Uh, did you have the steak or what did you have? With I did. The, okay. I had this with oh the my filet God. mignon. Oh, filet mignon was so delicious. Um, it was great. Um, and, and here we are again. So let's go into the glaciers. We were up there um, you know, a few days ago looking at these amazing glaciers. What should we know about glaciers? What makes them so cool? 
besides the fact sure. that they are cold. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're ice cold. They are flint, steel, hard, ice. Yet they started as snowflakes. And you think snowflakes, light, fluffy, a lot of air. True. It's kind of like, I guess, how wines come to be. There's an aging where light, fluffy snow falls on a mountain. We're in Southeast Alaska. I don't know if you'd mentioned that for our celebrity yeah. solstice. Yeah. So we're in Southeast Alaska. They have super tall mountains here. So the snow, snow falls on the top. It doesn't all melt in the summer and the spring. There's still some left. So next winter, more snow falls on top of that. And the next winter. And so decades after decades, my gosh, that snow that's been compressed at the bottom is no longer light and fluffy. It is again that flint, steel, hard ice. And so even though it's hard, it is fluid. It moves down the mountain and then it gets to the edge of land because these glaciers spill right over the edge of land into the right. ocean. It's called calving. They gave it a very biological term as if the, the glacier were alive. Yeah. Uh, they humanize it to a degree. Calving, they talk about the glacier's snout, its okay. leading edge, amazing. Uh, because the Klingit, the local native First Nations peoples here, they revere the glaciers. When they hear the ice crack, because calving means, I'm sorry, I failed to say, I just went right over it. Calving is when a piece of the face of the glacier chips or breaks off. And, you know, chips sounds like a little tiny thing. No, uh, it could be the size of a Manhattan, New York building. Yes. Just comes off the face of that glacier and poof, crashes into the surface of the sea, creates its own miniature tsunami. They call that calving. And it happens not because of um, global warming or melting. I'm not denying those two are happening maybe way too fast. The fact is though, what causes the calving is the movement of the glacier. It's like a river of ice. It formed way up where I talked about the altitude where layer after layer, but it then, because it's just so immensely heavy, it starts grinding reluctantly down the mountainside till yeah. it gets to the edge, the bottom, sea level. And that's where at its face, leading edge, snout, it cracks off these yeah. magnificent chunks. We were at Dawes yeah. Glacier yeah. at yeah. the end of Endicott Arm. Yeah. Not one of the more popular glaciers, but yeah. boy, not all the ships can fit there no. in Endicott Arm. And our captain, he spun this thing on a donut. Yeah. Yeah. I said, my gosh, the captain's doing I call them slow nuts, really <laughs> nice, gradual, gentle spins. So everybody on the ship got to see the face of Dawes Glacier. That's pretty amazing. You know, I woke up early that morning and we went by a glacier that was kind of more in the, the big sea. Um, I don't, I do not know what it was. They were kind of going right at it. I'll show you a picture later. You might know it. But, um, you know, there were those, um, there were the icebergs like sitting out there. They were all over the place. And I noticed this from, I, I know that you went to the captain's quarters to the bridge today um, and I got to go on that on the edge with Captain Kate you want to talk about a real captain you know, all these guys are captains but Captain Kate's special and so I got to go Isn't there with she her. the first female captain she in the is. entire celebrity she fleet sir. Um, and she's so great but you know when you're there you see that it these the bridge comes out further and what I noticed the other day was that there were probably four to six people sitting on that part of the bridge out there and they were looking down because there's things you cannot see on the surface, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so they're up there on this bridge and what you're referring to, those extensions, are called wings. Yeah. So, and like Chris alluded to, there's the floor of the wing is made of glass so they can see through it to see what's yeah. down there because these icebergs, you know, go, that iceberg isn't any bigger than a doghouse, but you're only seeing 10% yeah. of exactly. that. The rest, the other 90%, you don't see it, you don't know what shape it is, so you darn better stay away. Yeah. Gra they're called a growler. A the, growler, the small not like the growlers you guys are thinking of, and I know <laughs> what you're thinking, not the beer, not the beer, okay? Same spelling. It is yes. the same spelling, So, so you know. But that said, these small, yeah chunks of ice we can't call them icebergs only because they're not big enough to qualify yes. but they look again they look so innocuous yeah but just you know we're, we're here in august is yep. it okay to timestamp? Yes. Yep. okay august 2022 and just two months ago on june 25th a huge ship norwegian sun much larger than the yeah. celebrity solstice bumped yes like 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 a, a parking lot accident you know just a fender bender with a growler 
Yeah, it dinged the hull. They had to go super slow at reduced speeds into, uh, into Juno, send divers down to inspect the damage, and only after all two days of inspections, they were cleared to go again at reduced speeds back to Seattle to get a repair done, all from a growler, a small chunk a growler, of ice. A growler. Because you only see the doghouse. I guess what's underneath it is a nine-story building. Yep, amazing. Um, I love hanging out with him. Um, speaking of which, uh, we just tasted this, um, you know, um, Muscardini. I, I love Michael Muscardini so much. He's my dear friend, and uh, we just we really have some uh, amazing times together. And I just, you know, I get the chance to bring these great wines and these people that I really respect so much on these ships for people to really enjoy. And it's really when you're looking out at these amazing glaciers and you're seeing the, um, you know, the growlers sitting out there for you. And I mean, we just, you know, it's a really special thing when you're on a boat like this, or a ship, sorry, uh, a cruise, Good man. cruise line, um, as we're talking about, to be able to just enjoy wine too. And I think that you've been enjoying some wine. So what did you like about the Muscardini? That, okay, so how this many is, wines did you treat us to over the course of this whole uh, seven 17 days? wines that okay. I brought, and, and uh, I give a lot of credit to Darwin too, who's a great sommelier here, and I gotta do, a really great stand-up for um, you know a whole educational thing for the whole staff on small A's on this boat. There's a lot, um, so Darwin provided two extra, so we had 19 overall. Yep. So yeah, I love this one in particular. First of all, you give in addition. So I'm like a sponge because I'm a science guy. I'm I don't understand. I I don't know much about wines. I know what I like yep. or don't like. You teach us not just uh, flavors, percentages. You say, I know the guy. He is, he, you know, he makes this with passion. Yeah. It's on his property. He takes tremendous pride in the grapes and the processing is meticulous and attentive. And, you know, the fire uh, back in, I can't remember years, sorry. Uh, 2017 17. or 2020. 20. Uh, Both of them were bad. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, you, Chris gives us insights, personal insights into how that affected these vintners' lives. And I taste that after yeah, you yeah. introduce us to those aspects. So that's all that came into my mouth yeah. as I loved, of the, I can't say I remember every one of well, the 19. Well, I love it too because it's kind of like a super Tuscan because it's, you know, 52% Sangiovese, but then you got a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon in there, which would suggest that, but then it's got Syrah. So basically you're talking about three of the greatest regions of the world, you know, in my opinion, is you're talking about Tuscany, uh, Bordeaux and, and you're talking about the Rhone all together in one in one bottle that's a blend of the same grape varieties that they grow in those countries in California you know and that's just special that gives it a much more of a very um, specialty kind of thing so I, I just picked up so now we've got another one here too this is the Rowan I don't know if you guys know the Rowan brand red wine Rowan red wine brand this is 2018 vintage and it is an amazing blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, just over half Cabernet Sauvignon, I think it's 54%. Got 26% Malbec, that's kind of the key to this one. Just like the, you know, the Sangiovese is something like you just don't taste it every day, even though if you're in Italy, you do more than you don't. But you know, here we go into Malbec, everyone knows Cabernet. Uh, but you get into this and it's really interesting. There's some Syrah in here, I believe it's 16%. And then we have just little touches of Cabernet Franc and a little bit of Petit Verdot. And I just thought it was amazing with the steak. You know, one of the things is we had the peppercorn sauce too. We asked for a little peppercorn sauce with it and it was killer. Um, it was just so good. And it just, you know, you needed a little bit of something, something there other than just the regular steak. And I mean, the steak was perfect. And we're, you know, here we are at the, the Tuscan Grill, you know, and this is amazing um, restaurant. And this is like kind of the backdrop where people walk in. If you looked out there, we're looking at the back. We were sitting there during my little spiel and humpback <laughs> whales are jumping all over the place, you guys. This was real. We, we lost our attention on yeah. what Chris was trying kind of, to share with about, us. Bring it back. I said, let's do this. I'm going to do a pairing here. You pick up this wine. You bring you, you oh, drink right. some of the Shehalem, and this is my pairing with the humpback whales. And, and it worked. <laughs> Everyone fell for it. It's great. You know, 
it was the moment, you know. And we were drinking that um, Shehalem, and I just felt like it that's, was a gift. That's a great thing, it you know. Gift. And it's a good one too because when you think about Oregon, you think about the Willamette River, and more importantly, the Columbia River. Um, and you've got some big waterways there too, you know, that are very important. You know, just overall with water, I mean, you you've said it before that you know what the Earth is water. There's uh, tell us a little bit about the statistics there about water and the earth you know yeah and i i will i other i'll talk statistics with, with hopefully not throwing yeah. any numbers out yeah. because the fact is you know you you look now because of technology we have the international space station circling the earth every 90 minutes uh, not exactly in the same course it, it varies but bottom line is we have images from uh jim lovell an astronaut on apollo 8 taking pictures looking back at the earth and you look at these images and you go you know, we think Earth, terra firma, the third rock from yeah. the sun. We all think land. Yeah. Well, that's because we're so terra-centric, yeah. yep. you know? But the fact is, you, it's undeniable. The surface of the Earth is 72% water. The volume of the Earth is 95 plus percent water. No stats. Sorry, uh, dang no it, stats. dang no it, no stats, numbers, no it. numbers, doctor. I am sorry, couldn't help it, but only those two. So, you know, what do our continents, you know, magnanimous continents, what do they look like? They look like islands floating in this massive sea of blue, with a possible exception of Africa. Other than that, they look like, you know, North America, South America, connected by a wispy strand of land you barely see. Uh, you know, it's amazing that how much, I don't even know why we call it planet Earth. I, I think it know. should be planet water, and you probably think planet wine. Uh, I would say so, but <laughs> we need to get more people drinking wine, don't we? <laughs> I think this is a great one. What do you think about this? The Rowan, uh, you know, this is from a very, very special vineyard up on, you know, we, we know Dry Creek in Sonoma County. You guys know Hillsburg? If you don't, you gotta know Hillsburg. Uh, it's an amazing place, a great culinary uh, new capital of, of California, one of them. Um, and you go completely due um, west, northwest of there and you start getting into the Dry Creek Valley, and then you keep going past that, and you go past the rock pile, and then you keep going past that, and now we're up at like pushing, you know, 2,000 feet, and we're at the Cooley Ranch. And my great friend, Bob Cooley, and the wonderful people at Rodney Strong, they made a great relationship and cre created this Rowan Wine Company brand. And to bring it here and to share it with people was really fun today. I really felt like people were getting so much out of this. You loved it, I loved it, I love it anyways, that's why I brought it. But it's a great brand to get to know and I, I just loved how some of the people were just like, Chris, can you get me some please? And like, oh. of course I can. I got, I'll, I'll cover all of you guys if you need it. But it's a good one, you know, you're liking it, don't I, you? I love Malbec, you yeah. know, to begin with. So what a beautiful blend. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here with me, Dr. Dave, and uh, you know I can't wait for our next um, adventure together. And who any knows ship, what, any you know, ocean. You know I'll always be know. talking about the wines, and I know that this man will be talking about water of some sorts. But I really wanted to get him on and talk a little bit about babies too, because I thought that was a Aww. fun. I thought that was a fun topic that some people don't know about Dr. Dave is how many children he's delivered, five thousand plus and a great man thanks to those yeah, wonderful yeah, 5,000 yeah, women yeah, yes yeah. yeah and if I can I yes well, no, I mean course, you, you'll have course. the final word no, but no. I do have to toast your guests your viewers and just yeah. say please be kind yes be kind to the ocean her creatures and each other indeed thank, thank you, you brother thank cheers you. thanks for tuning in the varietal show will be back next week I will have more guests and we'll have more wine and more fun together but for right now, I'm hanging out with Dr. Dave. Let's do this. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Thanks. I'll need another glass. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>